Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. March and it's the start of the meteorological spring. But could there be some colder weather to come during the next week or two? I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 1st. At the outset, there are some outbreaks of rain in southern counties, but further north it's a dry picture with this area of high pressure influencing things. Now, in the short term, the rain tends to filter northwards, and then through Thursday and beyond, areas of uh, rain, weather fronts push in from the Atlantic and bring wet conditions more widely there to western parts of Britain, maybe central areas too. There's some uncertainty about how far east we're going to progress, and that's because of the blocking area of high pressure to the northeast. So, in the following days, what we see is those weather fronts begin to decay, another area of high pressure builds to the north of the UK, and we start to pull some potentially colder air in from the east, particularly there across southern counties. I don't think it's going to be terribly cold, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Just to finish the animation, by the end of it, it looks as though the Atlantic's beginning to return. Uh, weather fronts here pushing in from the west, heralding the start potentially of a transition back to more unsettled conditions. I'll just also now run the air mass temperature sequence associated with that same GFS run. At the outset, there's some blues there over Scotland indicating rather cold air. It's somewhat milder as you head southwards. And in the short term, you can see the Atlantic still pushing in, but then high pressure builds and we pull that colder air in from the east for a time. But by the end of this animation, potentially turning milder again here from the, from the southwest. What does that mean for the temperatures down at the ground level through the first week? Well, I think there will be some variations, but probably nothing too dramatic. Thursday, the 3rd of March here, Maximum forecast values from the GFS around 10, 11 or 12 Celsius in southern and central regions. Cooler as you head northwards. Moving forwards to Saturday, temperatures now down into single figures in southern and central regions. And going forwards to Monday, they've dropped another degree or two. So it's becoming quite chilly by this point, but not terribly cold. Also, though, the risk of nighttime frost probably increases. Um, 09 GMT. Forecast minimums on Tuesday the 8th of March, minus 1, minus 2 Celsius, a widespread frost if this is correct. And I think it's reasonably well supported by the MoGreps ensemble. The plot here shows forecast temperatures for London from all of the runs in the ensemble. To begin with, as expected, they're tightly clustered together, so runs all going for very similar solutions. But further down the line, the spread begins to increase. You can see the lines are further spaced out. That's suggesting a wider range of scenarios begin, beginning to a, emerge as we move forwards in time. And some of them are going for quite a cold uh, picture, some with temperatures a few degrees higher, much closer to the average, or even becoming on the mild side again. So it's all a little bit uncertain there towards the end of the first week in the south. Just going up to Glasgow, take a look at the north. The runs tightly clustered together again through the early part of this uh, forecast period on the chart. Then they begin to diverge with a greater range of outcomes once more showing up. Rainfall. I've brought up the days 0 to 5 forecasts from the European model on the left and the GFS on the right. I put them side by side because there are some significant differences here. The ECM has totals of between 10 and 20 millimetres in much of eastern England. The GFS chart there has lower amounts. Going forwards to the days 0 to 10 charts, by now the GFS still has very low amounts of rain in parts of eastern England, just one, two, three or four millimetres, whereas on the ECM it's closer to 20 in that same 
part of the UK. All in all, though, the wettest conditions here are further north and west on both of the charts. So it's quite a messy and mixed picture in terms of the outlook for rainfall through the forecast period with differences there between those two deterministic models. So saying for differences there over the 10 day period in terms of the precipitation distribution, what's the general pattern consistency like across the deterministics? First of all, the GFS, Tuesday the 8th of March, so the computer, computer model, the sequence was based on high pressure there centered to the northeast, potentially colder air, very close to the UK, but at this point it looks as though the Atlantic will be beginning to return. Now at the same time, the Canadian model has something similar. If anything, the, the colder air is further, further east, and the, the Atlantic there beginning to uh, break through perhaps more decisively or a little bit earlier. The German ICON model, similar story with high pressure there to the east. The ECM, so the European model, roughly the same with high pressure to the northeast of the UK, still have an influence at this point, but in the days which follow, the Atlantic would be slowly pushing back in. Finally, the UK Met Office, maybe a little bit different high pressure here, having quite a lot of influence at this point. Very unclear about how this would develop in the days which followed with this area of low pressure beginning to push in from the west, perhaps breaking down that high pressure block and also uh, bringing a return to wetter and more unsettled wet, uh, weather from the west. So by the end of the first week it looks as though the Atlantic will be beginning to push back in across the UK, more unsettled weather gradually returning from the west. But how do things develop through the second week? As usual, it's all about trends and probabilities, not specifics at this range. Starting with the 16-day GEFS plot for London, across the top it shows forecast air mass temperatures, the thick black line is a 30-year average, and the thick purple line is the ensemble mean. It's below the 30-year average to begin with, but then it picks up and it stays a little bit above it through the rest of the 16-day period. And it looks to be reasonably representative of the individual runs. Rainfall across the bottom, it's dry early on mostly, but then the number of rain spikes starts to increase. That's also reflecting the likelihood of weather fronts pushing in from the west, the southwest, bringing back more changeable or unsettled conditions. Will it snow? Well, the snow row is staying low throughout. There are still some runs forecasting snow to fall, but not a great many of them. Going up to Glasgow to see a comparable plot for the northwest of the UK. This time, air mass temperatures are staying below the 30 year average through the first few days and then tracking very close to it later on. So over the second week as a whole, probably just slightly below that norm. In terms of rainfall, it's a wetter picture. There are more spikes than there were on the London one. Also, the snow row is still significantly higher. So perhaps remaining cold enough at times for snow in the northern half of the UK. Looking at the two metre temperature data table, so going back down to the ground level, this one is for London. The columns are made up mostly of light greens and yellows through the second week. So the light greens, the forecast maximums are between six and 10 Celsius. The yellows, 11 to 15 Celsius not particularly cold by any means, according to the ensemble data. Glasgow, these are mostly light green and dark green, a little bit of yellow, but much less than on the plots for southern locations. So colder as you head northwards through the second week. The surface level pressure data table for York looks quite mixed as well. The columns have a good deal of yellow and orange to begin with, but then the amount of green and blues increases. So there's, there's quite a split there, but on balance, it looks as though lower pressure is going to become 
uh, is going to develop through the second week of the forecast period, more of an Atlantic influence returning. The ensemble mean pressure plot also supports the idea of more of an Atlantic influence. This is for 10 days ahead, so Friday the 11th of March, low pressure centred to the west, the northwest of the UK, high pressure there declining eastwards, and a west or southwesterly flow looking like being dominant. That's the GEFS view. The European is quite similar with high pressure centred to the east, low pressure to the west. The UK somewhere close to the boundary, but probably on the western side. So the westerly flow bringing in that milder air. Just taking a look at the 10 to 15 day pressure anomaly chart generated from the GEFS, a strong negative anomaly to the west and a positive one to the east. The UK and uh, a negative anomaly on most of the UK is there. Really just reinforcing that view of the Atlantic returning through this period, but still blocking areas of high pressure to the east. So, to summarise, week one, outbreaks of rain push up from the south and then move in from the west during the first few days. High pressure builds and it turns drier, uh, but the risk of frost increases on some nights and daytime temperatures will be edging downwards. There is some uncertainty about exactly how cold it will get at the moment, most of the computer model data is suggesting rather chilly, potentially quite cold conditions, but nothing very cold. Week two, unsettled conditions are expected to begin returning from the west or the southwest. After a chilly start, it turns milder once more, but it may remain cold enough for snow over high ground in the north. In the south, it becomes mild later on. So, there we have it. The start of the meteorological spring and quite a mixed and rather messy picture. High pressure having more influence for a time. Somewhat colder air being pulled in from the east, but it doesn't look like a late season beast from the east. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.